Let's get physical, it's Jordan here back in with this week's update, all the physical releases coming to the Switch. We're in the fourth week of October. Now this week, it's an absolute belter, but there is some essence of controversy which we should tackle head on. I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. Fury Unleashed. Fury Unleashed is a game I missed last week. I'm sorry. Uh, well, though, actually, I didn't miss it. I saw it. I wrote it in my preliminary list, but then deleted it after I couldn't find more than one source. But it was true. Fury Unleashed released last week in Europe. I can only truly apologize for this error and controversy. This looks like a pretty sweet roguelite run and gun. A bit of Contra mixed with Dead Cells sounds like a winning combination to me. And our executive producer Grantzer has chosen this as his pick of the week. Oh, and Bayonetta 3 is releasing this week. The game people have been waiting about seven years for is finally here with a slight bump in the road last week from a disgruntled voice actor. Now this has been covered to death already and Twitter was absolute carnage for a few days last week and I just grabbed my popcorn and enjoyed witnessing just how awful humanity really is. The mob was out, the YouTubers were out, the industry champions were showing their support. Words such as heartbroken, shocked littered threads as though they were all my anti posting on Facebook about the local chippy getting its window smashed in. Maybe not take everyone's word at face value, but it seems everything has come to light now with the voice actor wanting to move on after allegations she made may not have been entirely truthful in her calls for a boycott. Boycott! But whatever, who needs drama when you've got video games to play, especially Bayonetta 3? We've waited so long, are you excited about bashing angel skulls in? I am. I know our executive producers Issa, Jonathan Rumor, Punky Dooster, God of Resin, Dane Wilkinson, Viz, Instacritic and Parsnip Coffee have chosen this as their pick of the week. And just a reminder, if you live in North America and if any of the retail releases shown in this video take your fancy and you want to buy them, support these videos. Check the links in the description and you can buy something and support us at the same time. Video Games Plus are a great company, free shipping over 80 Canadian dollars. And yeah, just thank you to everyone who supported us so far. And as always, every week we give a $10 discount to one person at random who bought something in the past week. And this week, the $10 winner is David S. Congratulations. At the end of today, you should already have your discount code in your email somewhere. VGP will have sent it to you. Paradigm Paradox is releasing this week. This is yet another triple A Otome, which sent at least half of you to sleep, but 10% of you just got a boner or whatever the female version of that is. I'm not an expert. When it comes to all the big Otomis this year, I think this one has the least amount of hype to it, or perhaps people are just still exhausted from the triple helping a few weeks back. I'm not sure what to expect, but we should have a review over on VN Paradise at some point in the future. So head over there to check out the expert thoughts of someone other than myself, because I don't know Jack. Yamawari Lost in the Dark is releasing this week, just in time for Halloween. I believe this is the third game in the Yamawari Wari series. There is a double pack of the first two games on the Switch already, and this looks like a pretty cool horror adventure game with cute but creepy visuals and nice puzzles. I'm all up for this, but uh, yeah, I'd like to get the first double pack before I delve into this one. I'm not sure how prices have changed, but I remember like a year or so ago, the original was really expensive. I think it still is in Europe, but I believe North America got a reprint, which is cool. That put prices down somewhat. And who knows, maybe it'll get another reprint as a result of this new release. Looks like it'll be a great one for the spooky period. Miraculous! Rise of the Sphinx is based on a kids' TV show, and guys, don't faint. It's not by Outright Games. <gasps> They've released their tentacles of one of the kids' properties just for once. I really have no idea about this. In fact, I'd never heard of the TV show before looking into this game. But it's French, so expect... Well, I don't know. Nice moustaches? What's French these days? I don't know. It could be alright for kids. I've seen this ordered a couple of times already using our VGP affiliate link, so maybe there's some interest here. Any fans of the TV show? Is it any good? Let me know. And our executive producer, Elisa, has chosen this as her pick of the week. Coco Melon, play with JJ. I'd rather play with JJ's turds, to be quite frank. What a smug little git. And yes, I have seen him. When my daughter was younger, I observed what started out as a normal baby evolving into some sort of superhuman genius, doing backflips and shit. That dude needs to get back to his roots. This game, guess who it's by? Have a guess. You'll never know. It's outright games. Of course. Expect musical numbers, mini games for morons. I mean, children. Asterix and Obelix. 
Triple XL, I think, is releasing in Europe this week. Haven't seen much about a North American release, which is not unusual for the series. They have to take a while to get to North America. You may remember there is a trilogy of Double XL games that have come previously, but this is the Triple XL, which means it's bigger and they're ready to enter the adult entertainment industry. Expect more of the same, be budget 3D adventures like the good old days. As long as it runs well, I think there's always a time and place for this kind of game in the world. There's a big collector's edition available too. And our executive producer Cartoon Soren has chosen this as his pick of the week. Sharon Staircase is releasing this week. I don't know what's going to be so interesting about investigating the household of a middle-aged woman called Sharon, but she seems very mysterious. They always were the troublemakers in school. Sharon! Okay, it's more about the Guardian of Underworld or whatever bollocks that is. Pretty much the same thing with the Sharons I used to know at school. They were always trouble. Always. Anyways, this seems to be a horror game of sorts. It actually looks okay if it runs well on the Switch, as I will say about every game these days. 80 Days and Overboard is releasing at retail this week. Remember, Street Limited Games did their own version for whatever reason. Perhaps to provide a small cash injection, I don't know. This is a double pack of two games, both of which are heavy on the narrative rather than the gameplay, but supposedly rather good at what they set out to do. One of them is a derivative work of Around the World in 80 Days, while another is set aboard a ship as a lady tries to get away with murder. Fascinating concept. I've heard they're really good, so yeah, it presents decent value for money. And our executive producer Brent McLean has chosen this as his pick of the week. Horse Club Adventures 2! Oh baby! I think I need to make a video about all the horse-based physical Switch games. Considering the amount of them that are pumped out each week, kids must be gagging for them. I'm sure at least like a thousand people will watch it. I don't know. How is this game different from the first, which I can't remember officially existing? I don't know. I don't care. Maybe one for daughters at Christmas. Personally, I'm buying my Pokemon. The Last Door is maybe releasing in Europe this week. It's published by Tesura Games, who don't give a flying fig about release dates. Nice company, but something they need to work on is, you know, hitting a deadline. Or not changing it every day. Anyways, this game is a retro Lovecraftian point-and-click adventure game with episodes involving the occult and the otherworldly. Supposedly, a very good game indeed, if you like this kind of thing. Oddworld Soulstorm, I think, is releasing physically this week in Europe. At least that's what microids are saying. Not that I've seen it anywhere to purchase. North America is supposed to be the first week of November, so uh, who knows about this. Either way, this is a remake of the second game in the series, Abe's Exodus. They don't really make that clear in the name, which I think is a bit weird, but hey, people like this game. Who wouldn't? It's Abe. He's the best Abe in history. Yeah, even better than Lincoln and Homer's dad. I only know two Abes. And our executive producer, Ozgolo, has chosen this as their pick of the week. And this episode is going to be a bit of a beast, so let's have a quick roundup of some belated regional releases. Squish is releasing in Europe. Slime Rancher Portable Edition should be getting its uh, retail release finally. It's been delayed a bit. Life in Willowdale Farm Adventures. I think I messed that up, but that's releasing in the US this week, as is Baldo the Guardian Owls. Yes. All right, the Low Prince. Chaos Code, new sign of catastrophe, is PlayAsia's latest Switch exclusive. Yes, away from East Asia Soft. This time they've gone for a 2D fighting game. I had not heard of this prior to the announcement, but it looks pretty rad if you're into fighting games. They aren't really much of my thing. I play better with my feet than my hands, which is apparently not socially acceptable, in, uh, especially in party situations. I got kicked out. I took my socks off. This is a high-speed game that's supposedly rather accessible, and it looks great. It's full of anime babes and an Italian chef. How could that possibly be bad? Of course, I've already pre-ordered mine, and if you want to pre-order it too, links are below to buy and support us, and of course, our discount code SWTV5. There is a standard edition as well as a collector's edition, which includes acrylic standees, CD, among some other very nice stuff. Some uh, jailbait stuff as well. We all like jailbait stuff. You can pre-order right now. Please consider using our links below. And our executive producer Robotech has chosen this as his pick of the week. But wait, there's more. Because Play Asia have another, another exclusive this week. Twin Blades of the Three Kingdoms is a Play Asia exclusive in partnership with East Asia Soft, their usual partner. This is a strategy RPG set in the Three Kingdoms era, which got me all tickly inside and... Uh, then I saw it, and then I didn't get all tickly anymore. 
Okay, perhaps my expectations were too high, but, you know, I wasn't expecting an RPG maker game. Not that there's anything wrong with them, they can be alright. Plus, it's set in the Three Kingdoms era. Apparently, Su Shu is the hero, which I would not have expected. It actually reminds me a lot of my favourite NES game, Destiny of an Emperor. So, while I was quick to judge, I've grown to like the idea of adding this to my collection. If it was any other subject matter or story, perhaps not, but over 100 Three Kingdom characters, hell yes! Liao Hua, he better be there! He better be, I'm gonna go to East Asia Soft's headquarters, wherever they are. This is going on sale! Thursday, 11pm, Hong Kong time, wherever that is around your worldy stuff. And if you're purchasing this, please do me a favour, come back here on Thursday. Click our links to pre-order, shipping in January in a standard or collector's edition. And of course, our discount code SWTV5. Kraken Academy is Red Dot Games' latest Switch release. It seems they took a little bit of a chill pill when it came to the beasts that were Yuden Chronicle Rising and Demon Gaze, but they're back on it now with this great looking game. It looks to be an adventure style game where you are a new student in a very peculiar school. A similar art style to the recent No Place for Bravery, which, if you all remember, I complained about the noodle legs, and this is more noodly than a plate of spaghetti. It does look good though, despite that. Seems like it has a lot of personality. And, by the way, we've had this a few weeks already, but it's time to officially announce that Red Ark Games have extended their relationship with us. They actually offered us affiliate earnings as well, so if you click our link to their website and buy from RedArtGames.com, you can support us at the same time as well. And, of course, you can still get 10% off with S-Watch 10. Please consider using our links to buy it. And our executive producer, Jennifer M, has chosen this as her pick of the week. Grapple Dog is Super Rare Games' latest effort, and it's actually one of their own games. Yes, fully funded and published by Super Rare themselves. And no, Grapple Dog does not involve wrestling canines, which is a pity because that's my favourite Mongolian sport. Never mind. It's a bit disappointing, but what can you do? This is a supposedly great title, a lot of people in the industry were fairly happy with it, and it's a platformer based around momentum, as this cute dog hook shocks around the place with an art style that would make a great GBA game. Uh, yeah, I think it's a solid choice for platforming fans. Thursday, you can buy this. Darius Burst CS Core plus Taito slash Sega Pack. I've got to admit, even as a mild fan of shmups, this is getting confusing. There's been about four releases of Darius on the system, and I'm not the wiser as to how this is different from the previous ones. Stick to numbering your releases, or give them much more distinct names. Anyways, apparently, and this is information coming from someone who took at least two minutes having a look. Apparently this is a PlayStation 4 game and a Vita game. Chronicle Savior is a different game uh, from another Chronicle, apparently. <laughs> and this also includes two DLC packs from Taito and Sega, but is neglecting the other packs that released previously on other consoles. I don't know. You can pre-order this now at StrictlyLimitedGames.com. Anno Mutationem is Limited Run's big release this week. This is a great action game that mixes cyberpunk visuals in a simple but great art style, matching 2D with 3D. I've actually played this game for a couple of hours and I really got invested in it. I mean, at the point I got, I wasn't like 100% sold on the action. I mean, it was fine, a bit messy, but I was sucked in by the world building and storytelling. I'd have liked to have played more, but sadly, I've just got to get on with things, you know, that help earn some money. So yeah, it's a thumbs up from me so far. There is a standard edition as well as a collector's edition for uh, like double the price. And that includes a CD and a poster. Much value! And our executive producers Precision Plague and Thorn Metal Luna have chosen this as their mm. pick of the week. Outbreak! Contagious Memories is another release from Limited Run Games, the one they care less about, probably because it's supposedly a pile of old arse. Now, I will be praising the idea of old school survival horror in a bit when we get to the import section, but this attempt appears to have failed, with 3 and 4s and even 2s out of 10s for reviews. Steam is slightly more positive, I mean it had a handful of thumbs up from people who played less than an hour. Make what you will of that! There are two versions available, one on their website and a different cover version available on Amazon. They're hoping you'll buy two bags of shit. You can pre-order this on the 28th. Alright, we're heading into the imports. It's PlayAsia territory. Yes, if you want to import any game here, then please consider using our PlayAsia links. PlayAsia is the number one way to support us. We've started with VGP, but honestly, PlayAsia is the way to go. If you want us to survive, then give us PlayAsia affiliates. And remember, if you click our link, you can also get a very lovely 5% off with our current discount code, 
SW TV5. Signalis is releasing in Japan this week. This is a game I am massively looking forward to. It's an old school style survival horror game set in a sci-fi world. I absolutely love the visuals here. It's like old school Resident Evil made in the modern day. Solid backgrounds, fuzzy character models, I love it. It has great lighting effects too and I adore the nod to some of the resi puzzles of old. This Japanese release does have English and it is releasing this week. I know, it is also coming to North America, but not until next year. So if you want it nice and early, like myself, you need to add this to your collection. It looks fantastic. I will have a review of this later this week. I can't remember when the embargo is off the top of my head, but uh, please be there. I would appreciate it. And my executive producer, Vey, has chosen this as his pick of the week. Needy Girl Overdose is another import exclusive and this one isn't coming to the West, at least it's not been announced. This Japanese release does have English. This is almost a visual novel style game. In the West, you may know it as Needy Streamer Overload because we need to be wrapped in cotton wool apparently. Don't call girls needy, they are strong, independent women except in this game where she is really needy, but that's not the point. I'd compare this with something similar to Doki Doki Literature Club, something there to really subvert your expectations, hopefully better than Star Wars. It covers a lot of sensitive topics and isn't afraid to shy away from them. I've heard it's really good. I would like to review it, but it's just one of those where it's a bit down the pecking order, and oh yeah, the developer is Japanese, so they're ignoring the crazy English dude who keeps emailing them. Maybe we'll do one over on VM Paradise though, if I can get someone to work for me on that. We'll see. And our executive producer, Alexander Kato, has chosen this as his pick of the week. Ace Angler Fishing Spirits is another great looking import exclusive. Man, this week is killing it. And this one, this one I am determined to review. Ace Angler Fishing Spirits, the latest and second Ace Angler game on the Switch. I have the first one. It's an import exclusive that has English if you download the patch, but this one looks to have it on the cartridge. This is more of an arcade fishing craziness kind of thing. It has five game modes, looks to be packed with content, and you get to add fish to your aquarium. Does anyone remember Sega Marine Fishing on the Dreamcast? Because if you do, you know. We know. We know how awesome aquariums are in video games. I am really excited to go fishing. You have to be careful about which one of these you buy since the Chinese version does not have English. You need the Japanese one or the Southeast Asian version. Those have English. I believe there's even one that comes with a funky controller accessory, but that's out of stock. And our executive producer, jcross 7776 has chosen this as his pick of the week. Cotton 16-bit tribute is another tasty looking import this week. Perhaps slightly less so considering you may or may not already own the contents of this package. This is a double pack of 100% Cotton and Cotton Panorama, two 16-bit shmup releases in the cult series, in both the standard edition or collector's edition, which includes a soundtrack among some smaller stuff. Neither are particularly mind-blowing, in fact one is borderline experimental, but Strictly Limited Games released these individually in Europe, but of course, Japan. Japan isn't all about skimming the consumer as much as, you know, possible. So there is a nice double pack, very reasonably priced. Uh, do they have English? I'm not sure at the time of making this episode. It would be dumb if they didn't, but I wouldn't put it past it. Because the very special people at In In Games, they have a history. And they also have a future, because there's another game coming in the future where they take English out. Uh, yeah, maybe they they've been very in-in games and taken English out. We will see. But they're shmups. Who cares? They're retro shmups. It doesn't matter. English not important. As a side note, if you're desperate to pay more money for two separate releases, I believe Video Games Plus still have some of those individual games in stock. Links are below for that as well. Dead by Daylight Sadako Rising Edition is releasing in Japan this week with English. What is this? Like the fifth or I think it's the fifth Dead by Daylight game they have over there. Apparently there are four chapters on this cartridge while there are four to download or something. I don't know. I'm really not up to speed with what these games actually entail, but it's got Sadako in it, so it must be good. Also, there is this bunch of games happening in Japan this week. Some of them we already have in the West, some of them don't have English. 
All right, the community spotlight. It's going to be a short one because this episode is a bit chunky already. Bunny Bear picked up this bunch of games. Looks like they got a lot of imports. Quite a few from a couple of months back. River City Three Kingdoms is one of the final ones this year in terms of imports. Recommended amongst most of those, to be fair. Executive Producer. Cartoon Sorensen in this photo showing a big haul of limited run stuff. The top row being their main releases. The second row being distribution titles. Superland, I think I'd like to play that. Executive producer, Elisa sent in this photo, making me very jealous. I'm really desperate to play Trials. Uh, I want to start from the beginning though, so I'll have to get a computer that's not a Mac. Or maybe I could emulate, but you know. I like pain for my games. Philip sent in this photo showing off the Bullet Soul double pack. This is a Japanese exclusive that does have English and contains two really great shooters, especially the first one. I was going to review them, but it was just such a busy week that when it came out. Executive producer Grant Sir picked up Metroid Dread for a seemingly very reasonable price. I guess all the hype about this one has died down a little bit now. I guess it was out a year ago, but uh, I'm not sure this is going to be praised in the same light as Super or Zero Mission, but we'll have to see. Executive producer Instacritic sent in this photo showing off the absolute wealth of games. Uh, this dude is hoovering up everything. They even have the European version of Baldo up there at the top. J. Bin Minots, sorry I don't know how to say your name properly, this is inc like included in a massively obscure game here. It's not rare, but people just don't buy it. Strike! Tempin Bowling. I wonder if it's any good. Probably not. McLaren picked up this bunch of games. I'm hoping to show up the Kamiwaza Collector's Edition 2 at some point in the near future. Maybe next week. Nintendo Gamer Gal. Thanks for helping us out with our video games plus links. Yes, you can get legacy limited run games for a reasonable price there. Just have to be quick with some of them. Executive producer Robotech got in these games, a triple helping of Red Art Games and Limited Run. I'm guessing Hardcore Mecha and My Memory were held back because of Double Kick Heroes. That took so long to get out for some reason. Psych Villain, thank you ever so much for the donation. And you are right about Ultra Kaiju Monster Rancher. If any of you didn't watch my review late last week, you should. It's a pretty ridiculous game. I like it a lot. Steven Domitz, thank you ever so much for using our links to pick up three classic JRPGs from perhaps the best era in gaming. Fight me! I love it. Three, yeah, These three are essential imports. Essential. Executive producer Thorn Metal Luna got in this bunch of games. The top left is a beautiful piece of art. If you're not aware, it's Tasomachi, an English import exclusive. Executive producer Vey, our man in Japan, got in this bunch of games, including that utterly adorable collector's edition of RPG Time on the left. Look at that! I know the contents don't seem like too much, but I think it's worth it for the box alone. Looks great. Xandalex picked up these games, including the Steel Book Edition of Chaos, Head, Noah, and Child. I can't wait to get stuck into these when I've, like, retired from YouTube. Alright, I apologize, but it is time to start a roundup. I'm exhausted. Anibal! Burai Murian. Serial Scott. Dame Fortuna. Dead Tech. El Noel. Ilundara. Foot Gang. Garzilla. Mickey McFlynn. Needless Dragon Peter Clark Remy X Rick Menso Slow Mo Starvy Tech Zone The One Vast Neon William Hutchins. All right, send me pictures on Twitter over at So What About Game. Uh, you can tag me if you want to, but I'll probably miss it these days. Uh, so DM me. Uh, you can also send it to our email address, switchwatchspotlight@gmail.com, and our Discord. The server link is in the description. Uh, you can post your pictures there in the submissions section. Who'd have thought that? Please only send me one picture per week. If you send me more than one, I'll only choose one. All right, thank you ever so much for enjoying this episode. I'm assuming you enjoyed it. You, I don't know. Special thanks to our executive producers, as always. Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boombox, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Santa Tartaruga, Alexander Cato, Jcross7776, Elissa, Punky Dusa, Cartoon Saren, Robotech, Z, Raven Knight, Thorn Metal Luna, Parsnip Coffee, Issa, Vey, Mental Traveler, Grant Cert, Viz, 
Jennifer M, Instacritic, Precision Plague, Karacha, and our brand new executive, Oz Golo. Thank you ever so much. Plus you. Yeah, you're watching right now. You watched all the way through. What a massive legend you are. You help us grow. Uh, so yeah, if you're one of those people, leave me a... What, what do we got? What have we got? Coco Melon. Leave me a melon <laughs> emoji in the comments. You could just... Melon. I love that word. Melon. It has so many connotations. Check out some of our other stuff. Uh, last week I had Sea Horizon and Kaiju Monster Review. This week Signalist and hopefully Fishing Ace Angler Fishing Spirits if I've got time. And uh, yeah, Skies of Arcadia, it's coming! The Skies of Arcadia review on A Bit More Jordan is coming. Not this week, but next week. It's gonna happen. I'm gonna do it. Are you ready? Yes! Mm -hmm.